All right, guys. Today, I have a true unboxing. This will be the first unboxing I have done on a McFarlane figure. Uh, this is from The Flash. This is the Batman. And what they call it is the multi-version or multiverse uh, version of Batman from The Flash, which is strange. I'm pretty sure it is the 89 version uh, in The Flash movie because in the synopsis they do say it does take place like 30 years after uh, the Batman films in the Burton verse. So you can see that this has 22 points of articulation on it. Uh, let's take a look at the bottom. And then you've got the back of, of the box right here. So I'll show some close-up shots of the figure once I get it out. And we'll talk about it a little bit. This is what it looks like. All right, so let's get this thing opened up. All right, I always open my figures from the bottom to keep the box nice on top. All right. I don't typically open these figures because I keep them. If you guys have ever seen my videos, I have them in my studio in the back. All right, we can close this now. Move that out of the way. All right, so let's see what we've got here. It's only the second one I've opened from McFarland. I don't know how they... I think the whole box does slide out. There we go. All right, so we're going to move the box off to the side here. And then we have Batman. Some of it's shiny, some of it isn't. We're going to take a look at this here. He's got his Batarang. He's got his, his uh, grapple gun, and he's got a second set of fists here, which is interesting. Let's zoom in just a little bit to show these things. So there are the extra fists, and you get the battering and the grapple gun. All right, this is pretty cool. All right, let's take a look at this. All right. Comes with a base, which I will be using because I have the Lego Batmobile 89 upstairs, which I will bring down and show you him standing next to that down here once I get it all set up. But there's the base and there's a nice card. I'm gonna leave the card in the box for the time being, uh, but let's take a look at the card. So there's the card. It's kind of interesting art style compared to some of the other ones, but the card is gonna stay in the box with everything else. So I tend to keep everything mint. I keep the boxes on everything. Uh, but I did want to open this one. I know he's worth quite a bit of money, but I did want to open this one. So let's take him out of the box. So I don't want to unbox a whole ton, a whole bunch of these. It looks like we're going to snip off. We're going to snip off the uh, plastic on these. All right. So I'm just going to pull it up and then there's one elbow. All right. Then we got the torso here is held up by this here. So let's. should probably have oh he's got some on his feet too so let's cut these on the feet and i believe he's probably got one on his other elbow up here and he does goes right there. Perfect. I think that should take care of it because I think the head is held in by the bubble plastic up there. All right, so let's push him out the front here. So 
got his cape. Oh, and then he's got another one around his knee down here that I missed. That one's in there kind of tight. There we go. And I got all those things out. This is a true unboxing right here, people. All right, so here he is. All right, so let's take a look at his articulation here real quick. So you can see the elbows here. He's got a pretty big gap there in the elbow, and the elbow can't go all the way to the shoulder. That's as far as it goes. But it can come out and look pretty normal, kind of holding off to the side. As far as the arms go, looks like he has some, he has some shoulder pads here that keep his arms from going up any higher than that. All right, so let's take a look. One of the things I was curious about was the actual span of his cape. So let's, let's pull his cape all the way out, see how big this cape actually is. All right, so his cape, it's got a nice shape to it. There it is. It does go all the way out. It does have the right shape to it. It looks like the proportions are pretty good to what it should be in the movie. Um, that's pretty cool. All right, so there's the cape. Now, as far as it draping in the front, it doesn't really drape in the front. Uh, the way this is set up, it's got these weird, it's got these weird knobs on the side here. I don't know what that's all about. It's, it almost looks like, yeah. So that's where the cape is supposed to go. They did some weird voodoo stuff here. So it looks like that's where the cape is supposed to come off but it doesn't actually go in the front. And when you pull it back, you've got those two things just kind of hanging out there, which is weird. And sorry about the lighting. I tried to put better lighting on this, but if I put my light on above, there's, uh, there's a reflection. Let's see what it looks like when I turn the light on now, now that it's out of the box. I wanted just a little bit more light on this. That does help. All right, so we are definitely done with the knife now. All right. So you can see some of it's shiny and some of it isn't. The areas where it's not shiny, it's a little rough. Uh, the boots are a little bit different color than the rest. Everything else is black. Tons of articulation in it. So let's take a look at his face. This is one thing I was very curious about. Does he actually look like Michael Keaton? And yes, I would say that does look like Michael Keaton. Uh, you know, for what you pay for this figure compared to some of the more expensive figures out there, uh, I would say this one is totally worth the price that you pay. Now, the one goofy thing on here that I can see is the, the, the ears have almost a round knob on the top of them. I'm not liking the look of that. They're not sharp. Uh, they should be sharp. The nose is sharp. Looks pretty good. All right, so his arms, I'm probably gonna change out the arms. I'm probably not gonna have him with the Batarang. I'm gonna probably have him with his fists. So I'm gonna pull out these other hands here. how hard they are to change. All right, so we've got that one. And we've got this one. All right, so let's take these off. It comes off pretty easy. Goes on there pretty well. See, these hands that come with it is if you want to have him hold his accessories, which I'm not actually going to have him do. Put the hands back on there. There we go. Now he's got kind of more of a fighting stance. All right, let's take a look at the feet. Oh, they move, they've got a pretty big range there. And he's got the toe. All right, so 
Let's take a look at this here. Let's get him on the base. Put the foot flat. You know, with the foot flat, he actually stands very nice, solid, without even the base. Most McFarland figures don't do that, so he can stand up pretty well. I like that. Yeah. So, let's put him on the base, though. So, there's the DC. DC is now on the base, so you can probably get some crazier poses. Let's have him looking right up at the camera. That's about far as far back as he can go without bending his legs. Kind of looks a little goofy. There it is. All right, so let's take a look at this here. Take his other feet. There he is on the base. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out my Batmobile and we're gonna take a look at what he looks like next to the Batmobile. Overall, I really like this figure. It definitely looks like Michael Keaton. The eyes look like they're painted pretty well. Out of all the McFarlane figures that are out there, uh, I think this is one of the nicer ones. Uh, on a scale of one to five, I'd probably give this figure a four. Like the cape thing could be a lot better. Um, it'd be nice if you could pose the cape. It'd be nice if you could hold him, hold his arms out, you know, and there was something you could do with this and have his arms straight out, but you can't even get his arms straight out. So the best you can do is kind of drape the cape over his arms and it kind of looks like that. That's the best you can get. It would be nice if you could extend the arms all the way and have some kind of a wire on the cape. I guess somebody could mod it to do that. But yeah, I'm gonna go get my Batmobile. All right, guys, so here's the main reason why I wanted this figure, is so that I could display him next to the Lego Batmobile. It is almost the right size. The figure's a little big for the car, uh, and if anybody knows of anybody out there who has the McFarlane uh, Batmobile and they have an extra that they're willing to part with, uh, I'd be willing to purchase it from them. I don't really want to spend anything extra than what it came for uh, and for the shipping, but I would like to get my hands on the McFarlane Batmobile. If anybody knows of anybody who has an extra one and is willing to part with it, please reach out to me and let me know. But this is pretty phenomenal. Uh, I do like it. He's a little, like I said, he's a little bit bigger than the car, but not by much. And the car is dusty. I do have to dust it. Uh, that's the one bad thing about Legos. Uh, I'm going to have to keep an eye on these, but he looks phenomenal next to the car. So yeah, at the end of the day, I give this figure an eight out of nine uh, or an eight out of 10 uh, or four out of five. It's a really nice looking figure. Let's see if that'll focus. All right, so what do you guys think? That is a nice Michael Keaton figure right there. I just wish it had more posability with the, with the cape itself. I would love to be able to put his arms out and have him hold the cape up, but the figure does not allow for that. All right, so what did you guys think of this particular unboxing and this particular figure? I would love to see your comments below.